The time arrived and the crowds were granted access to Theriault's Clark Museum display. On hand to greet collectors with Theriault's founder and lead doll historian, Florence Theriault. Current president and lead auctioneer, Stuart Holbrook, was also seen discussing Huguette's life with anyone interested. No doubt, her affinity and love of everything French was very much at the um, pinnacle of, of her reasoning for the choices she made and the things she would buy over the years. But um, not just France, but again, another uh, a passion for a particular location and culture was Japan. So those two countries, I think, were the most um, unique in, in kind of instilling in her a sense of style, design, uh, costumes, all of these things went into her choices on dolls because she loved both French culture and design as well as Japanese. And you'll see throughout her collection uh, those two prominent themes uh, come up time and time again. As well, her love for Jumeau was clear and the Jumeau Triste was her favorite doll. I don't know if we can necessarily say why, perhaps the relationship to Carrier Belus from the Jumeau Triste and the fact that she loved French art, uh, that this was something that uh, inspired the, the 14 or 15 or 16 Jumeau Triste that she had in her collection. Um, but Jumeau in general, uh, and, and really that can go back to her childhood when she would have been an Onam Blue shopping in Paris in the early 1900s and SFBJs would have been the dolls that would have been displayed and shown and that she would have purchased. And so she probably was curious about SFBJ and its relationship to the earlier Jumeaux that she would end up collecting later on.
As the evening progressed, lectures turned to conversations, conversations to drinks, and drinks into dinners as Thuriot held an opulent banquet to celebrate Huguette Clark's life. Capping the evening off, Stuart Holbrook gave a moving and heartfelt tribute to the customer that meant so much to Thuriot, despite never knowing her name while she was alive. I know you're excited, you're talking to friends, but if I could have just a few moments of your attention, I would be greatly appreciative. It's Thuriot's 50th anniversary celebration, um, and I want to talk a lot about that for 14 minutes, but I also want to acknowledge something else that's a part of our 50th anniversary in the full circle and thank uh, those involved that helped to make this such an incredible special weekend. Could we have asked for anything more perfect than this? First of all, to the client. She was the client for over 40 years who graced our company from its very origins and lasted right up to two years before she passed. I think we should say thank you to Huguette Clark for making this the most perfect moment for all of us. Finally, all the work was finished, tours taken, lectures held, and banquets consumed. January 11th arrived as a lion, and few days have roared as regally. Get with Florence. A lot of the trend is people come to the walkthrough and then they go off on their own. I don't even know where to start. Did everybody have fun yesterday? Yes. Okay, great. When I started to work on the Get Clark collection, the first thing that came to my mind was, wow, she has a lot of Jumeaux. And how am I going to handle this collection so people don't, won't think the whole Jumeaux market is overloaded? And then when I started to look at them, I realized, no, none is alike. None is alike at all. Each one is different. Different because they were different eras that they were produced in, but also the Japanese houses. There are wonderful stories about how she worked with um, Catherine Marshall. Patience. We have this lovely woman. We have, there's the priest. Here's another priest. Here's another gentleman. So that's the beginning of it. And I believe we have every size. I think I said in the video we were missing one of the sizes, 13. but 13, but we're not. You're not? No, somebody came and corrected me and said, what are you talking about? Oh. I said, okay, whatever, <laughs> so I made a mistake. So there is a 13 here. So we have every size of the Jabot Triste um, that she made. She really, really loved the doll. And when we go out, uh, throughout the day is where as we're having the um, auction, Stuart will relate fa some fascinating stories about some of the Jumeaux trees that we had. So when you can buy, please look at the co dolls with their all original costumes and their wigs. Aren't they fabulous? Oh, okay. So let's move on to the table up here in the front. How about that? So here's a wonderful story about the Christian Dior. Now she was, although people seem to think of her in her later years, where her history kind of took her, where she spent the last 20 years of her life in a small hospital room. She actually lived a life in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue, a very high style, a real fashionista, and um, acquired many, many of her costumes and her clothing from famous Paris design houses, including Christian Dior, who evidently really loved her as a customer, because they, um, when she contacted them, and said, I would like to have you make some costumes for my dolls. They agreed. And we have the letters here talking about the costumes. This is um, one she had, it's called, and in the, in the letter they refer to him as Le Petit Prince. So that was the costume that she was aiming to have. And these are the letters that um, Christian Dior would send to her uh, regarding the how the um, development of the costume was coming and what they were doing. And I found it really amusing because at the end of every letter, then they would manage to tag on, oh, by the way, the spring showing of new fashions for people will be happening in Manhattan next week. <laughs> so, you know, they, they clearly, they did this for her. It wasn't their thing. So it was a very, very special thing. And I dare say in your entire life as collectors, you are never going to find other signed 
Christian Dior costumes for dolls. Every one of those costumes has the Christian Dior silk label in the back of the costume. And the letters come along with it too. So that's important. Another wonderful automaton. We won't take the time to do the automatons now, although we'll show them throughout the day as we auction them. And she had a very, very special love for automatons. And I think, that a lot, again, a lot of that came out of, A, her love of beautiful costuming, because she always tried to find them in original costumes, and B, her love of the theater, because they are performing, and C, her love of music and the family's love of music. Many of her automatons feature dolls performing musical acts. And think about, if those of you who went on the tour yesterday, that wonderful music room in Bella Esquardo, because the music was an important part of her life. There's an early photograph of her standing on the balcony of their, of their Paris um, appartement, where she is practicing the violin. So, you know, this is definitely was a very big part of her life. Another doll in totally original costume, wig, and the very rare to find Bebe Jameau silk banner on the sleeve. I mean, that is, I think that you'll see a thousand Jameaux and you might find one that will have retained. She loved that. the theater because she had her Theater de la Pelle Chanel and she had the French Opera Theater that's over there. And these things were all really, really delightful to her. And she would try to set up scenes. Um, somewhere here, there are, there's the background for, she had a whole series of backgrounds built for her by Au Non Bleu because they all have their label on the back. They don't seem to even have a theater that they go to. I think she was planning to, um, to use them to build a theater or something herself because she did have the backgrounds. And I don't know what table they're on, but we'll find them in a bit. So there's some wonderful things. Another triste, by the way. And so in Jumeau's, what about her face? What do you think? It's there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really, that one really reaches out to me. I love her. The wonderful thing about dolls is, to, is if we learn to judge artistic quality, then that makes our decisions good. But when it all comes down to it in the end, guess what? You gotta love them. It's your yeah. heart. Your heart has to speak. So you have to have, you have to have a, um, is that where your heart is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Wait, it's on that, oh, well, but it's on that side. That's what I'm checking. Uh, but, you know, that's important. But the more you train your eye, your heart will speak along with your eye, and you'll end up amassing a really, really fine collection because of that. I wanted to move up to this table because there's some things on here I really love. So we have had over the years, and Huguet was a, loved this particular doll. She loved the Asian tea server. Okay? And it's a wonderful face, a very distinctive face. What's really wonderful about that, you know that Lambert commissioned Jumeau to make very special heads for some of his automaton. And this head right here was made um, by Jumeau for Lambert and it was the only model it was used on, the only model, which is unusual because most of the automatons will have the same basic Jumeau head on them. So very, very distinctive, very original costume. And then when we had her collection and we're unpacking it, I said, oh, there's another one. No, it's shaking, doing a fan. It's a different movement. And then I looked more closely and I said, uh, no, it's different. It's different. Number one, the complexion is different. Number two, it's considerably bigger. That's a, what, about four inches taller? And she has an open mouth. It's not the same model. It's not the same model at all. Very similar, but not the same. That's a real rarity. I've never seen that particular automaton before. Uh, the girl under the dome is a wonderful piece and later when you walk around walk around and look at the back of her hat as well look at her stacked heel shoes she bought that from us i think in 1980 quite a while ago you can see how she really took care of her dolls and costumes because that's as perfectly preserved as when she bought it and then that's in Jumeau, and this is a Simon and Halbig, but both made for the French market during the period of the beginning of the 20th century when there was all of this fascination with all things Asian, let's say, the Schwenazerie. How about her? Something happened to her body, but she retained her heads, her hands, 
and her head is spectacular and remnants of her original costume. So there's a really, really rare doll. Let me just show you one automaton just for a laugh because I think, man, she was ahead of all of us in doing her exercises here. <laughs> this girl has movement. <laughs>